Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna show you my favorite top eight tips and tricks when using Microsoft Teams together with Microsoft Outlook. All right, let's jump on the PC and let's get started. Tip number one, you can set it up so any meeting that you create in Outlook is automatically a Teams meeting. Here, I'm setting up a meeting with Diego and we wanna meet on Teams. Now, of course, it's pretty easy to insert Teams into any meeting. I could go up to the top tabs, click on Meeting, and then click on Teams Meeting, and this will insert all of the meeting details. But sometimes I forget to do that, and the meeting will start, and Diego will ping me and say, hey, where's the online meeting information? Let me have Outlook remember for me. Here, I'll minimize this message, and I'm on my calendar here. I'll right-click, and here I'll go down to Calendar Options. Within calendar options, right at the top, I can check this box so all meetings are online meetings. I'll check that and then click on OK. Now, when I go up to new meeting, look at this, it automatically includes Teams meeting information, so I don't have to remember anymore. And I can do this on the web as well. Here I am in Outlook on the web, and within the calendar view, I'll go up to the top right-hand corner and click on the settings gear. At the very bottom of settings, I'll click on view all Outlook settings. Within the calendar view under events and invitations, here too there's also a checkbox for add online meeting to all meetings. I'll check that and then close this out. Now when I click on new event and I add an attendee to this event, it'll automatically toggle on a Teams meeting. Tip number two, you can drag and drop content from Outlook into Microsoft Teams. Here I have an email from my manager, Patty, and it looks like I just won employee of the month. I wanna make sure the rest of the company knows about this. Here I can take the attachment and I'll drag and drop it over into Microsoft Teams in this conversation as part of this channel. Here this will upload the message and now I can share it out with the channel. Along with being able to drag and drop directly into a channel, here I'll click into another channel and let me click into files. Here I can see all of the files associated with this channel. Here I can drag this attachment over and I'll drop it right over here and this will place it into the files view. As an added bonus, if I wanna make sure everyone notices this file, here I can hover over it, click on the ellipsis and here I can pin my file to the top. Now, none of my coworkers will miss that I was employee of the month. Tip number three, Outlook and Teams are, let's just say in sync. Anything that I create over here in Teams also shows up in Outlook. And this applies to meetings, to tasks, even your out of office messages. Let's take a quick look. Here for tomorrow, let me create a meeting. We have pigeon delivery at the Kevin Cookie Company, but for some reason, none of the cookies are being delivered. Here I'll create that meeting and I'll save it. Over in my Outlook calendar, here I can see that same event. Both Teams and Outlook rely on the same backend service, so any event created in Teams or created in Outlook will also show up on the other one. This also applies to tasks. Here in Outlook, I'm currently in the task view, and I have a few tasks coming up that I need to complete. So I can see them in Outlook, but can I also see them in Teams? Back within Microsoft Teams, over on the left-hand side, you'll notice that there's no option called tasks. Don't worry though, we can still get back to our tasks. Here at the bottom, click on the ellipsis and search for an app called Tasks by Planner and To-Do. When you click on that, this will open up a dedicated task view within Teams. And here I'm on the main tasks view and here you'll notice that the same exact tasks that we saw in Outlook also now show up in Teams. And these two also rely on the same backend service. So the same set of tasks that show up in Teams will also show up in Outlook. If you like looking at your tasks within Teams, you can get back to this view very quickly. Over on the left-hand side, you can right-click on tasks and here you could pin it. So this way you won't have to click into the ellipsis to find this app. It'll just show up as part of this default set. The synchronization doesn't just end there. You can also set your out of office message in Teams and that'll be synced across Teams and Outlook. Right up in the top right hand corner, you can click on your profile picture and right here, click into settings. Within settings under the general view at the very bottom, you'll see out of office. Here you can click on schedule and you can turn automatic replies on. You could type in your message and you could also configure these other settings. I'll click save. 
Within Outlook, I can go up to the File menu and then click on Automatic Replies. Here you'll see that they're currently turned on and this same exact out of office reply message shows up right here. So I can set this in either Teams or in Outlook when I need to take some time off. Tip number four, you can even check your email directly within Teams. Within Teams, click into one of the channels and right up on top, click on the Add a Tab icon. And right here, go over to the one called Website. You can also search for it right here. This will open up a prompt and for the tab name, I'll type in email. For the URL, I'll type in outlook.office.com and then click on save. This adds a new tab on top for email. And when you click on this, this will open up my inbox directly within Microsoft Teams. So you truly can just do just about everything from within Microsoft Teams. You don't really have to go to Outlook anymore or at least Outlook separately. You are still going to Outlook. Also, keep in mind that when anyone on your team comes in and clicks on email, this will bring them to their inbox. Tip number five, I can very easily and quickly share messages from Outlook to Teams and from Teams to Outlook. First, let's take a look at how we could send it to Teams. Here in Outlook, I have an email from Diego and we're trying to figure out where we want to eat lunch. Now, he sent this message to both me and Nestor, but I wanna include Patty as well except Patty doesn't really spend much time in Outlook. She tends to live in Teams, so I need to make sure I get this message into Teams. There are a few different ways I could access this. Right up on the Home tab within the ribbon, there's an option to share to Teams. I also have a similar option under the ellipsis right here, but I'll click on this option to share to Teams. This opens up a prompt to share to Teams and I'll type in Patty's name. Here I'll select Patty, and here I can see a preview of what this will look like within Teams. Here I'll click on Share. Here now we can see Patty's view, and it looks like the message came through. So she has all the details of who sent it, who it was sent to, and all of the context of the message. As an alternative, I can also get an email into Teams by sending an email from Outlook. But to be able to do that, I need an email address for a channel. Right over here, I see all of my Teams and all of my channels. Here, maybe I wanna invite the entire marketing team to lunch. So I'll click on the general channel and I'll right click. Right here, I can get an email address. Here I see the email address for this channel. I could also click into advanced settings and I could define who's allowed to send an email to this email address. I'm just gonna leave the default settings and then click on copy. Back now within Outlook, here I have my lunch message and I wanna forward this to the marketing team. So I'll paste that address in here and then I'll click on send. And here now in Teams, I can see that the email message came through and now everyone could weigh in on where they wanna eat lunch. Now, it's all great that I can get emails from Outlook into Teams, but what about the other way? And it's just as easy to take posts from Teams and to turn them into emails. Here, for example, I have my Employee of the Month certificate from my manager, but no one's liked this post yet, and that might be because a lot of people at the Kevin Cookie Company tend to work in email. Here, I'll hover over this item and I'll click on the ellipsis over here and there's now a new option called Share to Outlook. I'll select this. This opens up a prompt where I can send an email. It comes from me. I could put down who I wanna send it to. Nestor and Diego haven't congratulated me yet, so I'll make sure to put their names down here. I could type in some context up above, and here it'll show the team's message. It'll also include a link so they could easily navigate back to the source. This all looks good, so I'll click on Send. Tip number six, I can now set meeting options directly in Outlook Desktop. Now in the past, if I wanted to set meeting options, here I am in a meeting and I would click on the ellipsis, go down to meeting options, and I could set things like, well, who can bypass the lobby? Who's allowed to present? Do I turn on or off meeting chat? Luckily, I can now do this ahead of time as well, directly from within Outlook. Within Outlook Desktop, when you set up a new meeting, right up on the Meeting tab, right here on the ribbon, there's now a new option for Settings, and this will expose all of the different meeting options. For the last two tips, number seven and eight, they require a little bit more setup, but in my opinion, the payoff is pretty nice. I'll run through these two tips, and if you wanna use them at the end, I'll show you how you can set them up properly. Tip number seven, you can send an email or set up a meeting with a team. 
So what does that mean? Well, let's say I wanna send an email to this team and everyone who's part of this team. I can pretty easily do that. Let's jump into Outlook to see how this works. Here in Outlook, I have an email message that I've composed that I wanna send out to the marketing team. Right up here, I could come to the to field and I'll type in the team name. It's KCC Marketing Team. I'll select that. Here, when I click on the plus icon, I can expand it. And here I can confirm that this email will go out to all of the different group members of this team. You can also schedule a meeting using a team name. Now, for whatever reason, no one replied to my last email. So I should probably set up a meeting. Now, I did include some text saying that if you're unable to attend, I'll just take it as agreement to proceed. Uh, hopefully no one notices that it's 4 a.m. Now here too, I'll go up to the required field and here I could type in the KCC marketing team and I could select that and this will automatically send it out to all of the members of this team. And this brings us to the last tip of today. You can create a channel calendar in Teams and you can have that calendar then show up in Outlook. To add a channel calendar, click into a channel in one of your Teams and then up on the top bar, click on the add a tab icon. This opens up a prompt and you can search for a channel calendar or you could click on it down below. I'll click on channel calendar. I wanna create a channel calendar that we can use to keep track of happy hour times. Here I'll type in happy hour. Next, I'll click on add. This now drops me into the new channel calendar for happy hour and anyone who has access to this team and this channel can come in and view this calendar. It's a little bit barren right now, so I need to add our first happy hour. Let's maybe add it between one and 5 p.m. tomorrow. We work really hard here at the Kevin Cookie Company. We're celebrating the launch of the triple Choco Choco Chip Cookie. Now typically for attendees to see this on their calendar, I'd have to add each person's name here. However, I'm going to leave this blank and then I'll click on send. This has now added the event to the calendar and this looks great, but let's now see how other people can view it in both Teams and then also within Outlook. I'm now in Patty's view and here within Teams, she can click into the happy hour tab and she can see this event right here. But what about within Outlook? Can she see it in there as well? I'm now in Outlook in Patty's view and here we could see her personal calendar. She has one meeting coming up tomorrow at 9 a.m. But what about the happy hour? What happened to that? And how do we see the channel calendar? Over on the left-hand side, you can also see all of the different groups that Patty is part of. And here's one for the Kevin Cookie Company marketing team. When I turn this on, this will overlay any of the channel calendars under this team onto her calendar. And look, there's that happy hour. So we'll make sure that Patty attends. One note to call out, if you have many channel calendars associated with different channels, if you turn on this group, you'll see all of the different channel calendars overlaid on your calendar. If you liked tips number seven and eight, I mentioned it requires a little bit of setup and it turns out it's easiest if your team doesn't exist yet. Before you set up your team, go to Outlook on the web and click into the people view. Right up above, you'll see the new contact button. Click on this dropdown and then select new group. On the next screen, type in a name for your group. You could even type in a description and then create your group. Once you finish creating your new group, go back into Microsoft Teams and at the very bottom, click on join or create a team. Click on create a team. And over here, you can create a new team from an existing group. Click on this. Right over here, select a Microsoft 365 group. You can then go through and choose your group and then click on create. Once you do that, you'll be able to take advantage of tips number seven and eight. Unfortunately, if you already have an existing team and you wanna be able to take advantage of these tips, it's a little bit more complicated. You'll need your IT admin to run a PowerShell script. You'll need to tell your admin that you want your team group to be visible in Outlook. I've also included a link that'll walk you through exactly how to do this. It's not very hard, but you need someone with permissions to do it. All right, well, hopefully you learned some new ones. Let me know down below in the comments, are you gonna use any of these new tips? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. To see more videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you wanna see me cover any other topics on this channel, leave a note down below. 
All right, well, that's all I had for you today. Thanks again for tuning in and hope to see you next time. Bye.